Hi, welcome to this week's Fireside Chat. Uh, as usual, I'd like to thank Judy Zerubic for being on the other side of this recording, making all the technology run smoothly despite the headaches that it often causes. But the room is a little more crowded than it has been in past because on the other end of this recording are also John and Mary Phillips who are uh, learning how to do all the tech from Judy uh, because they'll be taking care of the fireside chat tech end of things next week. Um, after all, this pandemic has changed so much. And although we are now allowed to spend time while physically distanced and masked with others, many of us are still spending lots of time at home to keep from getting infected. While watching the news on TV, there are some of us who might have these thoughts going through their minds. While we are inside, frustrations between couples can be made worse by all that time cooped up together. Still, others have made peace with their lack of wanting to exercise. On Sunday mornings during the live streaming of worship, decisions still have to be made. However, the great outdoors still beckons to many of us. And that's a terrible pun, but once outdoors, we can change up how we worship as necessary. When outdoors, nature's music captures our souls with creation's vibrant composition. That D composition does add an atmospheric je ne sais quoi. Uh, been a lot of manure spread over the last week up here. Anyway, something that may also stink is the extent we need to protect students as they return to school this fall. Perhaps in the winter outdoors, our mask design will have to change. For many of us, when the pandemic was declared by the United Nations World Health Organization, we were saddened but resolute that we needed to lock things down to protect one another. However, most of us didn't guess how long that lockdown would last, nor how different would our lives be once we slowly, carefully eased our society back open again while worrying and wondering about how safe we truly are. Here's a humorous take on the effects of the necessary restrictions of the pandemic and about what we once took for granted. Hey! Yeah! Whoa! Got a lot of energy? Us too, right? Hey, honey. Hi. Do you remember? September Every night was a Tiger King vendor And we wore pajamas All day Yeah, March was scary And my face and her legs Got kind of hairy But we thought it was all Temporary Thought that COVID would go September, body ya. Maybe in December, body ya. Maybe it'll go away. Yeah. Yeah, we don't leave our house much anymore. But we get so excited when it shows up at our door. Amazon has got it going on. We always fawn when it crosses. A new delivery. I 
think it's the song you just got from Amazon. Ooh, all right, here we go. They know a thing or two. John Mayer time, yeah. They no longer need Zoom. It's a love song too. New Zealand's quarantine through. Maybe we should all just move, yeah. Not one case of COVID and they got full classrooms for the kids. And they make a really, really solid uh, a Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> if we wanted to go there, would they even take us? I know other countries kind of hate us, but we want a really, really big hiatus. This is bound to take a while. Hey, baby, we're moving to New Zealand. Why not? Because here in the States, it is out of hand. We're moving to New Zealand. I love your wine. Okay. We don't have props for this one. I'm sitting in my house way too much. Now I've forgotten how to use a clutch. And yesterday I tried a right hand turn. And then I slammed my front tire right into the curb yeah i'm out of practice and i'm kind of nervous yeah i got gas in april it's gonna last till august and i forgot how to drive yeah i'm especially bad at night I forgot how to drive. I forgot how to drive. I forgot how to drive. Whoa! True story. He drove at night for the first time in like five months, and he's like, "Wow, I what? can't see. What, even what is, is this? this? Why are people awake right now? Yeah. It was 8:30." Nothing like a bit of good humor about the realities of living within the pandemic. Our lives have been changed, but not just by the pandemic. Before the pandemic, we were challenged by climate striking students to pay urgent attention to the environmental consequences of our profligate lifestyle, personified by Swedish teen Greta Thunberg. The pandemic has taught us how our society has failed the most vulnerable among us, especially far too many of our seniors living in long-term care facilities who die so devastatingly due to COVID-19 because of understaffing, underfunding, and underregulating. During the pandemic, we found the Black Lives Matters movement changing our perceptions of white privilege and of systemic racism all fueled by the murder of George Floyd by a Minneapolis police officer. Through all of these developments, we have been challenged to learn, to grow, to change, to be the transformation we seek in the name of the risen Christ. For example, the United Church of Canada's General Council Executive has voted to transform its ministry and its mission through working to make the church actively anti-racist. Now, this is the logo for that transformation, along with some insightful wisdom. The beauty of anti-racism is that you don't have to pretend to be free of racism to be anti-racist. Anti-racism anti is the commitment 
to fight against racism wherever you find it, including in yourself. I have shared this quote from Franciscan theologian and spiritual writer, Father Richard Rohr, but I believe it applies well to our own need for transformation. He writes, we worship Jesus instead of following him on his same path. We made Jesus into a mere religion instead of a journey toward union with God and everything else. This shift made us into a religion of belonging and believing instead of a religion of transformation. Just as becoming actively an anti-racist church is all about transformation, so Jesus invites us into a journey of transformation ourselves. That journey calls us to discern how we affect others without even thinking about the consequences of how we live beyond our own familiarity and comfort. I would like to read a story written by Anglican priest and vaunted preacher Herbert O'Driscoll. And I want to thank Richard Hall for lending me the book, A Greening of Imaginations, Walking the Song Lines of Holy Scripture, from which I will be reading. Consider how the Apostle Paul invited Philemon to transform his living to more closely follow the way of Jesus by turning away from the expectations, the rules, and the societal norms of the time, and of this possible response to Paul to turn away from the normal practice of slavery. At one stage of his ministry, Herbert O'Driscoll writes, Paul found himself faced with a complex and sensitive situation. A young slave named Onesimus had run away and had come to Paul for ref refuge. The estate he had left was owned by Philemon, whom Paul himself had evangelized. It captured a fugitive slave, pardon me, if captured, a fugitive slave would face death. In spite of this, Paul advises Onesimus to go back carrying a letter commending him to Philemon as a fellow Christian and therefore as now more than a slave. It is a risk both men must have known, but Onesimus takes the letter and returns. We do not have any reply from Philemon. My hope, writes Herbert O'Driscoll, is that something like the following might have reached Paul eventually. To Paul, friend and mentor. I apologize for causing you anxiety by not replying sooner. The reason my absence from home on a business trip. I returned only yesterday and was given my accumulated mail this morning. In it, I found your letter about Onesimus. First, let me appraise you of how things stand. I've been away for over three weeks. I've been told that one week ago, Onesimus returned to our household and surrendered himself to the guard at the gates of my estate. As is customary, he has been kept in custody awaiting my return. As you can well imagine, the matter is high on my list of priorities. Let me assure you that Onesimus has been well treated in custody. I have drilled my guards that everyone in my household, no matter what the circumstances, is to be treated with respect for their inherent humanity. That does not mean that I hesitate to apply the full extent of the law if I deem it warranted. Paul, you must be aware that this young man's decision to run away is punishable by death. What you may not as clearly realize is that your request that I pardon him places me in a very difficult position not only will it be interpreted by some as personal weakness, but it will also cause me to run the risk of being myself taken to law by my fellow estate owners, all of whom own slaves. They will see my action as a threat to the whole system, one which they naturally wish to preserve. What I share with you now arises out of certain matters to which you refer in your letter. It is now three years since your first visit to my home. You will recall that you and I first met in the villa of Titus Vitilius, our local governor. A group of us had been invited to meet you. 
I did not then know that both Titus and his wife Priscilla had become devotees of the new faith of Jesus of Nazareth. Little did I know that this faith would speak powerfully to my own heart and mind and would draw my wife and uh, uh, Apatila and myself into this fellowship. Even less did I realize the consequences that would flow from this newly found faith. Above all, I would learn the essential worth of every human life now that our Christ has taken our flesh and died for all. I have come to see this new valuation of human life is a radically transforming element in the faith you and I now share. Also significant is that Onesimus himself now shares in this fellowship because of the effect you have had on him. Paul, I have made a decision that I know will please you. As I said before, I cannot ignore what Onesimus has done. To do so leaves me open to possible legal challenge. If I were to lose that challenge, it would destroy me financially and personally, not to mention devastate my family and, of course, eventually bring about the death of Onesimus. We, be, we begin then with the decision that he must be punished in some way. I have made discreet inquiries and I find that one thing the law allows me to do is to imprison him on my own estate. This I have already done. It allows me to order the conditions of his imprisonment and to set him to whatever tasks I choose during the period he remains prisoner. Speaking of such possible duties, I know you will be pleased at an inspired suggestion made by Aphila when we discuss this plan. We have decided that one of Onesimus' first tasks will be to make as many copies as possible of your own letters to the various communities around the Eastern Empire. These will, of course, include the letter you wrote to the community in Ephesus and the magnificent letter you wrote to the community in Rome. It now remains only for you to send me other letters of which you may have received a copy. In this way, you will be spared many hours of tedious task of making copies. There are far more worthy uses for your time. So my dear friend, I trust this news brings you joy. My hope, is that in passing uh, of time, my interest in this incident, or pardon me, in passing of time, any interest in this incident will subside. If my neighboring challenge does not, or my neighboring colleague does not ask troublesome questions, I have resources to make it to his advantage to desist. As well, we are not the only estate owning household in this province to be expressing interest in what some of us are quietly referring to as the new way. I send greetings from the many faces and voices you have yet to meet in our household church as it steadily grows. We pray for your safety on your ceaseless travels. Most of all, we pray that you may find an opportunity to fulfill your wish to come among us once again in Christ. Philemon. This is what we are called in this journey, we call the way of Jesus, transformation. Transformation of our perceptions of what is appropriate and what is faithful. Transformation of our society, which keeps evolving to eliminate all forms of oppression, of discrimination, and of othering. Once again, as Richard Rohr advises us, we are invited to become the transformation we are called to foster in union with God and everything else. I want to share with you a prayer written by John Philip Newell in his book, Praying with the Earth. He writes it in the Iona tradition of Celtic spirituality. Let's pray. For everything that emerges from the earth, thanks be to you, O God, holy root of being, sacred sap that rises, 
full-bodied fragrance of Earth's unfolding form. May we know that we are of you. May we know that we are in you. May we know that we are one with you, together, one. Guide us as nations to what is deepest. Open us as peoples to what is first. Lead us as a world to what is dearest, that we may know the holiness of wholeness, that we may learn the strength of humility, that together we may live close to the earth and grow in grounded glory. Amen. Well, that's pretty much it for this fireside chat. I'd like to also thank Terry Boyd, who uh, uh, renders this to our YouTube channel. Um, and if ever you want to access, the, well, you are already accessing it if you didn't get it from an email invitation, but go to YouTube, uh, type into the search engine on YouTube, King Garden United Church Ontario, and these will come up. Now, I want to send you off with a blessing from the Iona Prayer Book by Peter Miller. Imagine yourself surrounded by the ancient stones of the Iona Abbey in Scotland, the chill of the air, the moisture of the sea surrounding the island, the guttering of the candles, and the echoing silence of the structure as you hear these words. Lord, in this sacred space where even the stones speak your name, help me to be still and know that I am enfolded in your love. May our hearts be rested in the mystery of Christ's peace. May we lay down all the unfinished business of the day, enfolded in an embrace which holds close all the wonder and contradiction of the human journey, and much, much more. Go in peace as those God calls to transformation. See you next week. Bye-bye.